Hey guys, what's up? It's Shinobi Ranger here. Welcome back to another episode of our Total War 3 Kingdoms 1v1 unit comparison series videos. And today we have Janma Jian Infantry led by a Sentinel versus Heavy G Infantry led by a Champion. The stats for the two units should be popping up on screen anytime now, so you can pause and take a look and see who the two units size up against each other. We are playing this on Romance mode, so in Romance mode, the characters in the game are represented as larger than life characters as depicted in the novel The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. We are playing this on ultra scale settings, so on ultra scale, sorry, on extreme unit scale settings, so on extreme unit scale setting, infantry units max out at 240 men per unit with the exception of a few units. Okay, so now our Janmajia infantry are elite infantry which can be identified by the gold outline on their unit icon. Okay, and we are facing heavy G infantry and these heavy G infantry are the most Heavily armored G infantry available. They are the best G infantry available. And these infantrymen have heavy armor. So, not only do they have, so compared to regular uh, G infantry who have partial scale and uh, lamellar armor, these troops not only do they have breastplates, reinforced uh, breastplates made of lamellar armor, they have shoulder pauldrons, they have Laminar helmets with uh, neck guards. So they have shoulder pauldrons and then they have they have gauntlets. You can see that they have thigh and knee protection as well along with some creeps. So these troops are very heavily armored. So the amount of armor they are wearing is something equivalent to the armor worn by elite units. Uh, some elite units, like most of the elite units have such an armor get up, but unfortunately we don't because we are great sword infantry, okay. So we are great sword infantry who wield the uh, Janma Dao or in this case Janma Dian, the horse cutting or the horse beheading Jian. So we are assault troops. We are considered assault troops, so they could we can consider them as shock infantry. And we wield the great we wield a great sword, which is I mean the hilt of the blade itself is two feet and the blade itself is between four to five feet, so a very bulky weapon. We, on the other hand, we do not wear scale, we wear leather armor, we wear reinforced leather and we have additional protection for our shoulders in the form of pauldrons, gauntlets and knee protection. That's because you cannot wield a weapon and wear heavy armor, a heavy two-handed weapon and wear heavy armor at the same time. So, I need to compromise in some way. So, in terms of armor protection, uh, we have compromised a bit. So these troops uh, are elite troops, okay, uh, they are assault troops and they have splash attacks. So they have a splash attack on the charge as well as splash attacks in melee. So what I mean by splash attack is these units, when they swing their sword, when an entity of the, when one soldier from the unit swings his blade, all enemies who are caught within the arc of the swing take damage, either they are killed outright or they are sent knocked back flying they are sent back flying and get knocked to the ground okay that's the splash attack we cause fear we fight nearby enemy infantry uh, infantry we negate the charge bonus of enemy attacker so what we do is especially against cavalry we are anti cavalry troops okay these troops are primarily meant for anti cavalry work so if a general is charging this unit this unit will knock the general off his horse if it was regular cavalry charging headlong, they would be slaughtered. Okay, now both units have the caltrops ability and since it's the AI, they want to make use of this ability. Whether whether if it's whether if it's effective or not is not the question. The AI sees, okay, I have an ability. I will make use of this ability. So they're gonna throw these caltrops and it's gonna get a bit finicky, and since it's the AI, they are not gonna charge into us. So if we charge into them, we are gonna cause a lot of damage and it's going to skew the results in our favor we are going to get a biased result so to make it fair we just have them walk into each other and engage in combat to make it anti i know it's anticlimactic but for the fairness of the testing environment uh, this is necessary okay first things first primary general you are off dueling and you stay far away okay then secondary general you will initiate the duel so you stay there you will you will draw the enemy general away into a dude and lock him in place so that the two units can fight it out in peace. Okay, let's start. 
shock there are, are they advancing towards us yes they are he's gonna initiate the duel okay you run away We'll bring it down to 3 or 2 seconds and then accept the duel. So once the duel is initiated, they will not... Okay, accept. They are heading towards us. No, 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 no. No. No, no. Oh God. No, 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 don't go there, don't go there. Hello. Shit. Shit. Bloody idiots. Face me, you fools, I'm here. Oh, cat drops. Okay. Uh, okay. I think he should run away because he's in close proximity. Yeah. Okay. Fine. For the sake of speed and for the sake of time, let's just speed it up. Okay. Eyes on the unit. Okay, we just killed off 25% of the enemy unit. Okay, one third. Oh, both. You, okay, one third of the enemy unit is dead. We are also at one third strength. No, 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 we lost quarter of our men. Okay, we lost a quarter of our men. All right. Okay, we just crossed three digit kills. We okay, we lost one third of our men. Enemy unit is stop 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 half dead yeah exactly 120 half dead unit okay fall back just fall back fall back just fall back 140 to 149 yeah we are not considering the last kills because 
we cut them down as they were running away. So, 120 to 148 survivors. So, we just went below. So, we lost 92 men and we killed uh, 120 men. So, for the sake of simplicity, let's make it 90. Let's round it down to 90. So, for 90 killed, we killed 120. So, for every three of our swordsmen who fell, we killed four heavy G infantrymen. And again, uh, this is without applying the charge bonus. If the charge bonus had been applied, the results would have been a bit better in our favor. Results would have been far better in our favor. So, that's a decent exchange considering. But the main reason why they held so long and so well was that armor of, that armor of theirs. So they're wearing top-notch armor, okay? That is very expensive armor. So they're fully armored troops. Okay? Uh, this is like maximum protection, like very few units wear this kind of armor. Mainly the Imperial uh, units wear this. Uh, few of the Dragon units have that level of armor. Some heavy cavalry units wear even more armor. So that helped survive, that helped in their survivability. The armor absorbed some of the damage. So cost wise we cost 900 and they cost 800 and we won well, the exchange rate was pretty decent, uh, they put up a good fight, they are not meant for such offensive actions, I mean they are purely defensive too, they, they get the job done but just saying, so they are not offensive as in these troops where they their main business is to chew up the front line and hold the front line, they are excellent anti cavalry units that is for sure. So if any cavalrymen fail, charge into them, well, they're just going to be heaps of broken horses and men. But in our case, it doesn't work against us. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, then leave a like. If you did not like the video, then leave a dislike. Share, comment and subscribe. But make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos when they're released. Until the next video, this is Shinobi Ranger signing out. Bye.